Gypsy Rose Papery. Today I just wanted to do a quick project with the, some of the items that Laura sent me from The Papered Soul. And so today we're going to touch on the subject of decoupage. And decoupage was definitely one of those things that when I first started I was so confused about what it was. In my mind, <laughs> the word decoupage just seemed like this unsurmountable task. Like it was something that I would never get down. It was something that I needed a lot of supplies for. It was something that just seemed out of <laughs> my ability as a crafter. Um, and so it wasn't after watching several, several videos and then kind of just coming up with my own way, which translates to the easiest way possible, <laughs> is that I felt comfortable enough to start incorporating them into my journals. And so that's where I'm going to show you today. So all you need for this, you'll need what you want to decorate. I'm going to use these alteration tags um, because they're nice and sturdy. And then I got these coin envelopes from the papered sole as well, and they're really nice quality, nice and thick. And so the other thing you're gonna need, obviously, is a napkin. And these are also, and also I should say that all the items here, except for obviously the glue or the washi tape, are from the paper sole. And so the reason you'll need washi is because these napkins tend to have three layers and for you to get that second in-between layer it's extremely difficult to do that with just like your fingernails or your fingers without kind of tearing up the paper towel so or the napkin and so that's why um, we're gonna use the washi and then uh, this is my favorite glue to use for decoupaging uh, because it goes on purple but then it dries clear so you can kind of see where you still need glue. You can kind of see um, if there's some edges that are up, you can kind of glue over it and not worry about it staying purple because it'll eventually turn to clear. And I'll also use some trims just as a decorative effect at the end, but let's begin. Um, if you want to do this along with me, great. If not, obviously you could grab these supplies later if you don't have them readily available. So. I'm just gonna tear off a little piece of washi. You don't have to um, use a lot of it, but just a side note on washi tape, which I didn't know until I now realize this as I'm cleaning out my craft room, is that if you don't use these, um, they become brittle and then the glue goes bad on the back and so they will be absolutely useless. So I know, um, like me, if you're if you're anything like me, I'm a total washi hoarder, and I've just started using these in whatever I can because I it would be really sad for them to not be um, used anywhere because I kept them so long or hoarded them so long. So, just a little side note. And so basically, it doesn't really matter what corner you start, but I like to stick it in the corner and peel hold the, like the back part a little bit and then just peel I think this is just the first layer so just peel carefully because you can tear the napkin okay so this one actually doesn't have that weird in between layer it's actually just as is then you want to decide like what is it that you're looking to decoupage onto your surface here and so this one is pretty cool because it has a lot of like little square patterns that you could kind of clip out um, individually and kind of layer on so I think that's what I'm gonna do on this one so this is pretty perfect like the bottom cuts off right where the skeleton ends so I'm gonna totally clip this here And so then my next decision is what side. I think I like it on this side better. We're just gonna go ahead. Oops, sorry for shaking the camera. Go ahead and start putting the glue down. And like I said, this glue is like school glue so you don't have to worry about like wasting it. Like, so be generous with your glue. And then I'm gonna work my way from 
I just noticed, see this is why it's good to have purple glue. You might not see it as much on your end, but I can definitely see it. Um, there was a corner there that I didn't get. So let's start from the corner and work our way up. And I'm not totally concerned with wrinkles, especially for these because they're like Halloween. And so I think wrinkles would be a cool effect here. Um, so let's see. Let's do that there. And we're not going to worry about um, the shape just yet. We're going to kind of tear around that. And then obviously I want this crow in here. And I think I'll put him just right on top. But I don't want anything to cover him. So I think I will alternate this pattern down here. Maybe this one right sort of there. And then we can kind of tear this because I don't want to cover up the skeleton either. Okay. Right, and then it's still not big enough, and I wanted one of these H's in here. But the H, I don't think I'll keep completely square. Um, oh, you know what? Yes, I know what I'll do. I want one of these spiders. And so, where's the crow? Oops. There you go. I think I'll put the crow there, and then the spider kind of coming down. Now my hands are getting sticky. So now you have to be careful because then you're, you'll tear everything. But let's do the crow right about there. And this little guy needs glue underneath, I think, because it keeps popping up. And so if you did put glue on it, just let it dry so that you can, um, oops, you can come back and start sort of cutting out whatever pieces need to be cut out and all of that. So I'm going to go ahead and let this dry and come back. Okay, so it's um, somewhat dry or almost completely dry. So I'm going to go ahead and fix the edges here and kind of cut the shape back. And this is your tag. And so the one thing I would have done in retrospect is distress it before. So like, see that? Uh, glaring white area. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And I'm trying to clean keep my area clean here. Um, I'm going to repunch this hole so that napkin piece comes out. Okay, so there you have your Halloween tag and we're going to use this gorgeous trim that Miss Laura sent me and so I will do some of this trim and I don't have a very particular way about how I tie my tags I just kind of make a knot I'm going to make a little bow the best I can and there we go cute little tag I love it love the way it came out and so we'll put this one to the side and we'll work on our little uh, coin envelope here. And so this one, see, I learned we're going to <laughs> pre-distress. And so I pre-cut the squares. I'm going to alternate these squares here like this with this middle one there. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the corner first. Oops. So let's do that there. Put that right there. 
Okay, so um, I'm just adding some little decorative touches. So here I have two spider punch outs that I distressed. Um, I just used purple and next card to punch them out. I'm going to re-distress the edges because I want it to look really nice and grungy. And so what I wanted to do with these little scallywags here is um, use a little piece of the purple. But with this, I will probably use some fabric tack because um, I want it to stick really well. So we use a little of the eyelash from there, but then I also want to put a little spider kind of as the closure, and I use the word closure very loosely because it's not really a closure. It's just for, for, for looks, and I love this green, and I love the combination of green and purple together. Glob of glue on here. I'm going to stick this right there, and then I'm going to use this other big old glob and put this one right there okay so this is what it looks like it's super cute I'm so in love with it um, I would probably put a magnet there just so that it closes really nice um, but you don't have to and the inside is probably fill in with more of these punch outs um, but you could fill it with whatever you'd like because it's it would be your project not mine um and i really super love this one thank you for everyone who is here joining me and i hope to see you for future episodes and i will see you on the next one bye <music>